CEO for Keystone Family Line. Really started it out in Center County um, State College and just really wanted to be able to support um, vulnerable children and the families caring for them. And they've seen huge success, really well put together care communities. Um, they've shared stories of, you know, the people serving the families talk about, hey, we're getting a new placement, not you know, this family is getting a new placement. They really mm -hmm. like take part and take heart and um, feel like they are ingrained into this family, even though they're not the ones necessarily that are the licensed foster parents, but they feel like they are also getting a placement. Mm -hmm. We partner with them. Their, their mission is to bridge the church and the foster care community. Mm -hmm. There's about 140 kids in Lebanon County in the system and like nine families through Lebanon and CYS. Um, and probably half of those families are on, only take toddlers. And that's, you know, that's what we want to do also. The care communities is, you know, that the first Wednesday of the month, Trisha's coming with a meal. and The pizza. Yeah, with a <laughs> pizza. And they're going to love the pizza or at the next... Kelsey's coming and her kids are going to play with them in the backyard. And yeah. that's something that they can look forward to. And, and the parents are going to get like 10 minutes of adult conversation. Yeah. I had started volunteering to um, babysit for the foster group when they met. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to meet some of the families and the children. Um, and then when I found out about the care community and Sam and Janelle said, maybe we could make a care community and they could help a family. And I thought, why would we only make one when we have so many foster families? You know, if we have six foster families, why don't we make six care communities? Um, it just makes sense because mm. it really is pretty easy. Um, yeah. All that is required of us is to pray for the family and to bring a meal once a month. Um, and like, we're all busy. Like I get that. Cause I'm constantly like trying to, the Bruce's are busy. Keep like, no, <laughs> yeah. no. like boundaries, you know, don't commit to everything because you're going to be overcommitted. You're going to be stressed out. Um, but then on the other hand, like faith without works is dead. Like we're required mm -hmm. to serve and um, this is an easy way to do it. Yeah. And, and it's really needed. A neatly packaged way to be what you kind of internally want to be which is salt and light and make a difference. And it's really cool if you think about it. It does require you carving out time and everything, but you, and it's just selfish. I'm just going to say this is selfish. I really, really like what it enables me to do regarding my own children. Mm -hmm. Perspective, their whole world is just like too awesome. <laughs> we have that conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to lessen the awesome. How awesome your life is. Yeah. So really as we're recording this, my daughter's at home making brownies for our family uh, that see, I have to deliver food yeah. to tonight. So, elaborate on like, that because you share this. You elaborate on that. Um, like, yeah. The, I mean, the kids are now involved. At first, they're like, why are you cooking two meals, mom? Well, this other family in our church that you know and we're friends with needs some help. So now they get real excited that we're sharing meals and things like that and Emma, tonight I said, I have to go talk about the care community. Can you help finish up dinner? And she's like, yeah, what do you need me to do? So mm, she made the brownies, awesome. you know? So she got involved. It's kind of Chris is at home stirring mashed potatoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that when we're done here, I can go drop off and relieve their night. But that's kind of what actually it was your lovely wife that mm -hmm. kind of led me into wanting to participate in this and just knowing the families, knowing Janelle, knowing Sam and what this means to them. But we were watching my little nephew for a while and it was became very stressful, very quick. And I had no idea, like just adding one more and having to do Zooms with his mom and do this. And yeah, because it's not just one more, right? It's a whole It's a whole bunch different world. It's not just like, oh, like now I'm having a baby, but that's going to be ours and that's mm -hmm. just going to fit into mm -hmm. our life. But this is a whole different schedule with doctors and all of these activities that they need to do and who needs to be included. And your wife one night just showed up at my house with dinner mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh my good. And I had told her for days, like, no. Yeah, everybody always says no to her all the time. I'm good. And I think she texted Chris and was like, I really want to do this. And she just showed up. And my kids love the meal. And it happened to be a very stressful night. The call didn't go well. See, I, why? <laughs> like, there was all these things. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And she just showed up. And it was like such a blessing, like, in that moment.
So then if I could do that for somebody else, I mean, it's a very low. I do once a month on a Wednesday night and it's whatever mm-hmm. I'm already cooking for my family. Mm-hmm. And it's no, pretty but, simple food. What you said is so true. Like this, um, do we want our children to be kingdom minded selflessness? You know, Jesus is like seeking out opportunities to do this. It's going to make me emotional. It really is powerful. And and you want your children to do that. And w- what we try to do, I think, is protect them and keep the world from them and stuff. But this is the right kind of world. This is the right kind of salt in, in, in light. You know, you want them to almost have to sacrifice a little bit. And, and it really isn't even that. That's the irony of it. It's just like they're really like making new friends and broadening their horizon. I'm speaking to like when they're more involved, like when they show up then your whole family's got skin in the game, you know? Yeah. Ministry for families to do. Um, Kids can relate to other kids in ways that adults can't relate to them. You know, we have a biological daughter and she's related to some of the kids that have come into our home in ways that we could have never connected to them with. Um, And it's really powerful. um, And it's certainly something that, you know, some of these children that come to our homes are, we may be their first and sometimes only experience interacting with someone who loves Jesus, who follows Jesus, who believes in Jesus. And we want these care communities to be the church that supports so that these kids see that it's not just the foster parents. You know, it's just like your biological parents, like, oh, it's just what my parents believe. But when you have mm-hmm. multiple so people and the same message so and true. people just showing up, I mean... That's part of why they're in foster care probably is no one shows up for them. So now they have all of these people consistently showing up. They know every Wednesday someone's bringing us a meal because they love us. And we want to be a church and we want to be a community that says like, we love you because Jesus loves you. And maybe that's the only time they ever hear the name Jesus, but we want it to be a positive interaction i wonder why we're in this situation where we're lopsided where we have all these families stepping up to to do it and then maybe the support is less what i guess i guess what i'm after is like something to pierce the um the apathy but bubble or something like why is that is that just because we're protective of our time and yeah i think people think it's a bigger commitment than it is like they think um that it's going to require a lot of time. But really, I mean, if you're praying already, you can add this family to your prayer list. Um, and then yeah. if you're making dinner <laughs> already, already, you can. Or if you're getting pizza for your family, you can just get two pizzas and bring one. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not the best cook. <laughs> but, you know, you can, you can still help, you know. Yeah. So it really is easy. The meal ministry has been great. We've used them prior to creating the care communities um, with placements. They've come for a couple of our pla- my placements, and I've, like, count the days until they're <laughs> bringing a meal because it's between the appointments and the visits and caseworkers and the paperwork. I mean, sometimes it's like, oh, I guess I have to feed some people here <laughs> soon. And then it's like, what do I even give you and, and you're at the end of yourself and i'm tired of eating chicken nuggets and mac and cheese and like you're tired of eating chicken nuggets and mac and cheese so <laughs> um it's just yeah i mean i think people don't know what they don't know um i think that's a good answer i mean and i that's part of what janelle and i specifically our mission is is to create that awareness of that there are families and there are children in foster care in palmyra like I think some people thought the care community was to actually become a foster parent. Uh, or that it's so all child people... care. And really that's yeah. our, our minimum requirement right now is that um, they bring a meal once a month so that the foster family is getting a meal once a week. So it's a group of like four or five people. Um, and then consistent prayer. The team but you know it's not going to stop there, and I know it's not well, going to stop the there. Well, that's the goal. Because it's that's true. It's the, the way it works. That as right. you're Once creating you relationships them. and you're praying for them and you know what's going on in their life and what they're struggling with and what upcoming 
court hearings could be about or appointments could be about, um, that then the care community can step into other support. Um, right. Cause other you just know about it. Yeah. It's just like, um, that. cause then it's like, you know what? Let me do your, let me wash your towels and your sheets. Oh, this your lawn. Let me, on move your and lawn. On and on. let me pick up your kid's medicine at the pharmacy for you today. It, it's not always childcare. And I think that's part of the misconception is that they think that I'm going to, Hey, can you watch my kids for three hours? <laughs> not true. Um, I mean, that would be nice, but, um, there's a lot of other things that would help me, um, help the other foster families, especially when we're in kind of a, Mm-hmm. a valley, mm-hmm. um, with behaviors or, um, really hard seasons. Like if you just did my baby's laundry, that would take like four loads of laundry away from me. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I have a baby that is constantly vomiting on himself. So you did some laundry. That's a lot wow. that I don't have to worry about. <laughs> Powerful. Well, okay. Let's dream big then. It's a team of like four to five. So if you're a couple, you count as one. Um, Or if you're a family serving, we have a couple families that kind of serve together. They count as one. So they do one week. Um, So realistically, you know, you're looking at like 50 individuals got involved in this. Everything's like locked down. Three care communities started. Um, We're the first and only in Lebanon County through Keystone Family Alliance that have these care communities. Um, But we're also one of the only churches that have families to be served. Other churches that Keystone is working with, they maybe have one family in their church that is, they're the foster family and everybody knows who they are. <laughs> and, but they have a ton of people that want to be involved, but no Gosh, one to serve. So, so we have the opposite problem. So listen, we, we have gotta, families we that can need do to this. be served. I have a lot of faith that this is going to happen. I, I really do. I just know that I like what you said. They don't know what they don't know. It's important. I think this aligns with the heart of the church. Maybe the reason we have so many families is because we're growing and there's a lot of young couples and there might be some demographic reasons. But if we got 50, and I know families count as one, 50 dedicated touch points to this ministry on, on a monthly basis, right? Mm-hmm. That would get us to the goal line, right? Correct. And our our goal, really, what we would love to see is that prospective foster families, as they are getting ready to be licensed, that we have a care Mm -hmm. community for them before they even get a placement. So that when they get a placement, you already have that relationship with the foster family. That makes a lot of sense. Um, So that the day the placement comes, which is always chaotic and a lot of unknowns that they don't have to worry about going out to Walmart and getting pajamas for that night because the kid came with nothing or going and getting formula or diapers because they literally handed you a baby and that was it. Um, So the care communities can then step into that space and can provide those things when the placement comes and then continue to support them. Um, When you sign up, you are signing up to serve a family for a year. And then after the year, we kind of reevaluate. Be part of a care community. You are required through Keystone to do a one-hour training. So that can be virtual. Um, but we are setting up a one-hour in-person training at the church on April 30th at 7 p.m. Janelle and I will be running that. It takes an hour. It's really just so that everyone is kind of on the same page of what we're expecting. And then, um, you know, there's some maintenance stuff in there if a kid divulges something to you that you're kind of a mandated reporter because of the space that you're in and um those kind of things there's a little bit of trauma stuff in there but it's not like a full like Mm -hmm. trauma informed Mm -hmm. training it's just one hour it's pretty much just videos and then we kind of discuss and people can ask questions um and then um trisha i don't know if you want to talk more that you're registered in a we use the promise serves website all of the scheduling is through Promise Serves. It's really easy. Everyone just takes a week, like first Wednesday of the month, second Wednesday. And then um, you can put in like what you're making so that they don't get like a repeat. Meal. That's really good. I haven't been good about doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's so it's like a whole everyone bunch of tuna, tuna fish casseroles. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> 
Well, I'm on Trisha's care, like part of her group. And what was very helpful, I think, was the first week that we all met, she had a list that was compiled from the family of like things the kids did. Super liked, cool. Things the oh, kids yeah. did. Like that was super helpful. Mm -hmm. For each care community, we have to have a team leader. And that requires one additional hour. Um, and it's really more just the training on how to use the website and what the Mm -hmm. Hand holding Additional a little bit. Yeah. expectation is of the team leader. The team leader is really just the communication point between the family being served and the rest of the volunteers on that team. And they send out the emails um, with prayer requests and kind of coordinate, you know, some get togethers. We had another care community that did like a spring get together and they all met all at right. a park and did like a little potluck at the park. And if their families brought their kids and they played with the families being served. Absolutely beautiful. Let's step up, church family. Come on, we can do this. April 30th, 7 p.m. is the in-person training. Um, you can contact myself. You can contact Janelle um, if you have any further questions. But um, once you do that one-hour training, you sign a couple of things, and you're pretty much ready. We can make the teams from there. Light up to dark. We can do this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Really?